Welcome, my friends. You're listening to The Voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh-day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome again, my friends, to the voice of the eternal gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I'm inviting you to pray with us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are facing fearful times ahead of us, and we pray that you would help us to hate sin and to love righteousness. Amen. Pray for your Holy Spirit to convict us of sin and righteousness and of judgment, that we would turn from sin, any sin, in our lives. Please help us to that end. Bless us now as we study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In the previous program, we were trying to, you know, cover, um, finalize um, the fifth plagues. And we noticed that uh, we want to get into the sixth plagues. Well, and I was asking a question to the both yeah. of you. What would have happened, but very late, when the people will see, will see that uh, in some places, very popular place, uh, people that nations in multitude follow, uh, and they will see that the plagues were falling right there, they will kind of abandon completely. And that's the drying up of the U that Euphrates will be River representing, in the sixth plague. By the way, if you want to see... Uh, if you want to know how how people are going to hate the system and abandon the system, Revelation 17. Let me let, let's read how the the Word of God describes how much the people are going to feel, how much hatred hatred the people are going to turn into the system. Revelation 17. Verse uh, 15 through 17. Read it, please. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, uh -huh. where the horse sitteth, uh -huh. are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Talking uh -huh. about the Euph spiritual Euphrates right. River. That we read already mm -hmm. and when, we, we, when we were introducing the six plagues. But keep reading. Okay, now going on, I just need to explain that the papacy is represented by the eighth head. It was the fifth, but... He received a deadly wound and was revived and became the eighth head. And on that eighth head are ten horns. For verse 12 and 13, it says, These ten horns are ten kings which have not received kingdom as yet, but they have one mind and give their power and strength unto the beast. Well, in Revelation 17, uh, this section here is, is talking, John is talking about the seven heads and the ten horns. And the ten horns are on the one of those heads, okay. and those horns originally were the powers that, uh, in Western Europe, that, that submitted to the power of the papacy. And who were they? you remember that? Powers like the Franks, who became okay. France, the, the German, Ang the Alamanni, right. Germans, the right. Anglo-Saxons, okay. England, okay. Portuguese, Suevi, right. the Spanish, the okay. Visigoths. Good. Okay, and, I just want... People to know that we're not inventing things in here. Yeah, but, Making but things up. Now the ten represent all the kings that of have the arranged themselves under the papacy. At first they're giving their strength and power to the papacy. But at now, but it says in verse 16, uh, they, the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore mm -hmm. and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And it says in here, pay attention, that number 10. 10 is a means in biblical meaning. Number 10 represents completeness. Complete. Right. But so the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. right? The Ten Virgins on Matthew 25, meaning all the churches, yeah. you know, just carrying the, the lamp, the light. But 
They have not obtained the experience of the oil, the Holy Spirit. What else? Also, you know, there's seven last plagues. Seven is the number of completion, but also. six is also the number of man. Man was made on the sixth day, okay. indicating that this system is under man and not under God, where everybody will worship the beast and his image. Six, um, we will find that six in Babylon represents, uh, six is a number of the sixth plague. The sixth is a plague that Babylon is exposed by. Mm -hmm. uh, the plague is couched in symbolic terms, whereas the other plagues were couched in literal terms. The sixth plague has always been understood to have symbolic application, but the other plagues have been given literal applications. Now, why is that important? Because the sixth angel pours out his vial mm -hmm. upon the great river Euphrates. Mm -hmm. This is symbolic language here. Right. When the when the first plague came, it fell on the sea. It fell upon the those who worshipped the beast. That was not symbolic. That was literal. That was literal plague. Okay, that's literal point out of the plague. By the time we get to the sixth plague, though, there is a moment to think about. The symbolism here is taken in two things. Number one, it says the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. All right. The Great River Euphrates is not literal Euphrates in the Middle East. Mm. We're talking about spiritual Euphrates, which right. is dealing with spiritual Babylon right. that, you talk, that, that Patrick and you have just covered. Right. So now when it says, and the waters thereof were dried up, the waters means that the support of Babylon. Mm. So Babylon is supported by people, mm. all right? Nations, oh, nations kings of the earth. Right, and so the support of the people, the nations and kindreds is dried up. This is why later, what's causing them to be dried up? The plagues have come, and they are, they're experiencing the plagues, mm -hmm. and they realize too late that the whore has deceived them. And this too why, late. This is why, this is too late. That's why they say, these shall hate the whore and burn it with fire when we go to Revelation chapter 17. Mm -hmm. Because they made war. They joined in making war with the Lamb. Mm -hmm. Revelation 12, 17 tells us what the war was. Mm -hmm. Because behind Babylon, spiritual Babylon and the nations, was Satan and his angels who stirred up, who deceived Babylon and stirred up the nations to go against the Lamb or God's people representative of Jesus Christ who have his glory in their heart and mind. Mm -hmm. Because remember, the Lamb is not talking about Jesus himself because Jesus, has, Jesus is coming in the cloud by this right. point. But at the same time, and besides this, get this, it's interesting that Satan came as Christ mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, the Bible said they made war with the Lamb. And, G and when Satan comes as Christ, he does not deliver any of God's people. He heals sicknesses and diseases, but he does not, he does not deliver God's people from this present world. Mm. Right. Mm. But when Jesus comes, he's come to deliver God's people from this present world, plus raise the dead out of the graves who died in Christ. Amen. This is very important to keep in mind. And the real Jesus will not touch, touch the earth, earth when he comes, right. right. So this sixth plague is gonna deal with this issue. Now that's what we're looking at the text. Look at the text, so it said the way of the, way, it said that the river of Euphrates was dried up. Mm. Dried up means it lost the support. Mm. And then y'all read Revelation 17, 13 through 16, that showed how that drying up would take place to the point that all the nations and people, multitudes will begin to hate the whore and wanna mm. burn it with fire. It says here that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, who, is the, who are the kings of the east talking about? Now, east deals with the rises. Go to Numbers 2-5 for me for a moment. Okay. I believe it's Numbers 2-5 or 5-2. Let me be sure. Uh, it talks about the camps. Uh, oh, no, it's 2-3. Two, 2-3. Three. Two, three. Numbers 2-3. Yeah. Look at it Wait. carefully. Numbers 2-3. Yeah. Can you read that for me? And on the east side, toward the rising of the sun shall they of the standard of the camp of Judah pitch throughout their armies. Now this is very important because in the sanctuary service, the east is very important. Now it, it, we might not see, some of us don't see it, but we'll see it now. If we study the sanctuary service, there's only one way to enter the sanctuary. You enter the sanctuary, you go in towards the, you go into the sanctuary from the east. Right. Now God's throne is sitting in the western part of the, if you, if you look at that carefully. Now when God sends a message though from his throne, mm -hmm. it comes out through the sanctuary by way of the east to, the, to, to, to go it out. 
Now there were three tribes that camped around the sanctuary towards the east. They were Zebulun, Issachar, and Judah. Now, what did Zebulun refer to? Zebulun in the Bible, when you study the history of Zebulun, they were the people who handled the pen. They were, they could write. When you study the is issue of Issachar, Issachar were people who knew the times. And Judah was God's lawgiver. So God is going to send a message from the east. First of all, in Revelation chapter 7 and chapter 14, we see the messages that are coming from the east in the three angels' messages. One will proclaim his law. Fear God, give glory to him, the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him that made heaven and earth. If one commandment is mentioned, the whole law stands, okay? That's dealing with the Sabbath. Then the other one, the other message is going to come. It's going to also, the message is for those who know the times. And those who know the times will also begin to preach, but also it will be given to those who know how to write or who can publish the messages. And so God is going to send a final message in three areas, in proclaiming his law. He's also going to send a message in for bringing about the signs of the times. And he's going to bring a message dealing with the... Um, not only knowing his law and the signs of the times, but also knowing, uh, being able to publish it. I'm sorry, yeah. yes, publish it, yeah. right. Isn't that what we're doing, by the way? By the way, that's exactly what by we're God's doing. By God's grace? Okay, this is, this is what Issachar, knowing yeah. the times, Zebulun, knowing the, having the pen, mm -hmm. and Judah proclaiming the law. Amen. And that's the message that's coming out of the East. Now, why is that important to us? Mm -hmm. Because... The way of the kings of the east may be put. We asked who were the kings of the east. Right. The east represents the rising of the sun, correct? So go to Malachi 4.2 and tell me what, who, what, who's, what, who's, a, who's a son of righteousness, a son of rising but sun dealing with. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness, that's capital S, that's son Jesus. of yeah, arise with healing in his wings and ye shall go forth and grow up as And captain. where does the sun rise from? From the east. Where is Jesus coming from? From the east, according to Matthew. Uh, Matthew 24. Right. It says, as lightning, come up, uh, to, as lightning come out of the east and shine up even to the west, mm -hmm. so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Mm -hmm. So this kings of the east is referring to the coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Th there is something else, too, mm -hmm. that I want to bring about this from the east. Um, but we need to... So but let, let's have it in Revelation 7. But we'll, hold it right there. We'll be right back. Hi, friends. I'd like to introduce you to a special book that we have available. It's the story of Pastor Rafael Perez's journey from preparing to be a priest in the Roman Catholic Church and how God worked very providentially in his life to turn him from that decision to following Jesus in the light of present truth. If you've been blessed by the Eternal Gospels program, we want to invite you to receive our new book entitled From Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. It is the personal testimony of our speaker and director, Rafael Perez. But more than this, if you want courage, if you want strength, this personal testimony of this 150-page book will give you insights into why God is calling men and women out of Babylon. And if you'd like to receive it today, just call the number at the bottom of your screen and ask for offer 777. That's offer 777. Why 7? Because the seventh day is the Sabbath. Why seven? Because the Sabbath was sanctified. Why seven? Because the final issues in this great controversy is between the Sabbath and Sunday. That is my journey. I hope and pray that you are going to order the book right now, from Babylon the Great to the Eternal Gospel. May God bless you all. Welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, there is another message for this end time that it is represented by an angel coming from the east. What is that? Can we? Oh, that's talk about? in uh, Revelation seven. chapter seven. Okay, mm -hmm. and it says there, and I think it's verse two. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, from having the, the seal east. of the living God. Mm. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth 
and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Now, do, do you know, this message is such an important message that coming from the east. It's coming from the east, ascending from the east, ascending. Ascending, ascending, nobody will be able to stop it. Like the sun rising. That's right. To you the, see, to the, the, devil, the devil tried to imitate. Now he's a, such a bad imitator. He's trying to make people believe that we should be uh, commemor uh, commemorating or celebrating the sun rising. Mm -hmm. You know, the sun rising oh, the, the east? Oh, the mass at the mm -hmm. sun rising. Right, the sun rising mm -hmm. that the ecumenical churches do. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating in the last, mm -hmm. I don't know, 20, 30 years. He's trying to imitate. But the real ascending is the message of Christ sealing. Wanting to seal you and seal us for eternity. It is such an important message. Yeah. That, do you know in Daniel chapter 11, verse, verse 44, it brings trouble. Those messages coming from the east bring, brings trouble. I know, Pastor Brian, I know you've got a lot to talk. Tidings I, I'm well trying to hold you yeah, now for a second. Yeah, yeah. Because this is important too. Yeah. I know you've got a lot no, of No, 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 you're, you're right. Because all, all I'm going to bring out is that remember, the angel from the east Angel is a message, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a message. But, but, the, but the one with the message from the east is also a symbol of Jesus because east is the rise of the sun. Amen. And you go back to Malachi 4, 2, but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise and heal his wings. So it's a message of the, from the son of what? It's a message of Christ's righteousness Amen. that's about to lighten the earth with his glory that we had talked about previously in Revelation 18. Right. This is the connection Isaiah of the two. 60, in Isaiah 60, two. verse 2, what he bringing out? Yeah. The, you know, so rise and shine for your what? Your right. light has come, but the sun gives off light. So right. question, what light would the sun give off that, the, that, that would cause trouble even, to, even to uh, the king of the north to, that will make away many. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll, I'll give it to you. Daniel 11, 40, uh, 11 44. 44. So what is this light that's shining? Well, uh -huh. the Bible tells us that light in John, in John in Psalms 119, 105, what's it say? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And, and Proverbs. Okay, well, Proverbs 6, 23 said the commandment right. is a lamp and the law is a light. Right. So first of all, the light that's going to cause problems mm. is the light coming from the word of God. Amen. Not from people making up making up stuff, right, but right. coming directly from the scriptures. Amen. All right, the Bible itself. Not the, tradition. The, not, not tradition, no. not custom, not but custom. what's coming from the Bible itself. Right, right. By the way, in previous mm -hmm. program, there was a great theologian. Because you see, about 85% of the people who are watching this program today did not watch that program. And right. I know they can go to YouTube and, mm -hmm. and catch up with all of us. But there was a great theologian, Roman Catholic theologian that mentioned that the keeping of Sunday was a custom. Who was that? Yeah. Do you remember? Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas. Okay, good. That's right. All we right. don't need so, to read it again. That's right. Okay, go ahead. So now notice it says it's coming from the East. So light is talking about the Word of God. So the, the teachings from the Scriptures uh -huh. is going to stir the oh, world right. at the end of time. The it's, same Word that brought the world into existence uh -huh is the same word that's about to stir the world because destruction and wrath is coming on the, and, on the world. And will cause trouble to some people. It will cause trouble. To some and the Bible said places. he will go forth to make away many. It will actually bring about persecution. Yeah. It says here, the, e the east meaning the rise of the sun. So Malachi 4.2 says, but unto you to fear my name, so the sun of what? Righteousness arise. So this issue is, this angel from the east is bringing a message of Christ what? Righteousness. righteousness upon the world again. So we see it again from that angle. But in this righteousness is the seal of the living God. What is righteousness, by the way? The Bible said again in Psalms 119, 172, what? My tongue shall speak of that word for all thy commandments are what? Righteousness. righteousness. All right. But so in the commandments is the commandments are what? Righteousness. righteousness. But in the commandments, you have the seal of God. Yes. Can you tell us what seal that is? Well, uh, King Seal has uh -huh. his name, his title, and his territory. Yes. And, and so God must have his seal in his law, and it's found in only one commandment. That's the fourth commandment. So here we have... Can, the, can we give an example of yes. it so uh -huh. people can understand now, this? Now remember, the plagues are falling because the people are in transgression. Right. So let's reverse it for a moment. If you're keeping the commandments, then you have not transgressed God's law, Therefore, God has a right to preserve you 
protect you, mm. mark you with a mm. seal of protection from the plagues that are coming as a result of transgression of Very his good. law. Yeah. How do we call it today? While this program was recorded, the president of the United States is, what is his name? He has a, Who is the name? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. The title is what? President. 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 The territory? United, United States. United States. No, Donald Trump, president of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. It's just an example so we can understand. And what we're saying is, the, in the only commandment that is found, the name, yeah. the title, title, and the and territory, territory is, is in the fourth commandment. commandment. And that's the, uh, the name. The Lord. Lord thy God. The Lord. Title. Creator. Creator. Territory. Heaven and earth. Amen. That's right, heaven and earth. Amen. That's right. Amen. So going back again. So you got it. You, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I hope you're picking this up too. You, you understand. So this ascending angel has the seal of God proclaiming the fourth commandment. And keeping. Amen. That's right. Remember. And that will trouble now, this king of the let, Lord. Let's be careful. Let's be clear. It says, how many commandments God has? Because some people say God has two commandments. God has nine commandments. God has no commandments. No commandments. Oh, okay, all hold of them nailed on the cross. We just read in Psalms 119, 172, that all thy commandments are righteous. How many commandments? All of them. But what commandments are we talking about? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 13, mm -hmm. tells us about the covenant. Again, what's it say? And he declared you his covenant, which you command before even what? Ten commandments. commandments. So all ten commandments, mm -hmm. unadulterated, not changed by God, because God does not change his law, nor has he given man the authority to change his law, mm -hmm. nor priest, nor prelate, nor, nor no, no preacher out there right. has a right to tamper with God's law. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God's Ten Commandments, as given by given to him at Sinai, are mm -hmm. not to be, that that is the law. That is the law that carries with it his name, title, and territory. Can I bring something over here? Mm -hmm. You mentioned and of course, I'm re referring to Daniel 11, this king of the north. Mm -hmm. Who was the king of the north when Jerusalem was being taken captive? When Jerusalem in ancient times, when in ancient time, in the ancient, literal, in, the in ancient time when literal Jerusalem was taken captive, yeah. the, king was north was, the, north? the king of the north was known as Nebuchadnezzar. And I in, in Jeremiah, uh, Babylon, right? in Je Jeremiah 25, okay. 9, look what the Bible right, says. Okay. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 25, I, I, I just tried verse to 9. Our Look, audience in right. there to follow Anciently. what we're trying to the bring ancient, to The ancient kingdom of was ancient Babylon. Yeah. Notice very carefully. Behold, I take all the families of the north, right. said the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar, right. king of Babylon, right. my servant, and will bring them against this land right. and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations mm -hmm. round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and perpetual desolation. Right. Now, so okay. literal mm -hmm. Babylon was up the north. North, and by the way, the what spiritual was Babylon today is presented. It's been presented like a, in the north. Why? Because it's a counterfeit system. They're trying to replace something in the north, in the sanctuary. Very important. Also, what's what? God's throne. God's throne. It's unbelievable how Satan tried to imitate, to counterfeit. But again, he's a bad imitator. It, it mess up everything. Go ahead. Verse 13. Ahead. For thus, for thou hast said in thine heart, mm -hmm. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Mm -hmm. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Whoa. So, so again, he, he want to take God's throne. And anybody. God is the original king of the north. Right, amen. Uh, Psalm 48, verse 2. Right. And... Uh, Satan trying to... The city of the great God right. uh, on the sides of the north. But then Satan's a usurper. Right. And then he uses Babylon originally, the mm -hmm. conquering Israel, taking the crown off of Zedekiah's head and putting it on his head. Mm -hmm. And then it's overturned to the next king of the north, Medo-Persia, overturned to Greece, overturned to Rome in two phases. Mm -hmm. And then it will be given back to Jesus who's right at this. I want to show again where the north was located at. What okay. was in the north? Because remember, the Bible said the way of the kings, of the, the, the river your phrase would be dried up. Mm -hmm. Anciently, to show you again, go me to Jeremiah 46.6. In Jeremiah 46.6, the Bible said, let, the, let not the swift flee away, mm -hmm. nor the mighty man escape. They shall stumble and fall towards the where? Towards the towards north. the north by the what? Your river river Euphrates. Euphrates. Right. And then uh, look again at Jeremiah 46.10. Yeah. 
For it says, for this is the day of the Lord of hosts, a day of vengeance. Mm. Notice the wrath of God anciently came upon ancient Babylon. It was called the day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries. Mm. And the sword shall, be devour, shall devour, and it shall be satiated. Mm. It says here, and made drunk with their blood. Mm. For the Lord of hosts has a sacrifice in the what? North country mm. by the river Euphrates. The north country is the country of Babylon. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And, and river Euphrates running through Babylon. So God is showing you that the north in the Bible was a symbol of ancient Babylon. And Euphrates ran right through it. And then when we read the story of Cyrus, right. we read how Cyrus came through and dried up the river by diver diverting the, water, the literal water that right. went through Euphrates. Amen. Little river. And, and take notice too. On the, what you just read, the old Babylon make it drunk with the blood, with their blood. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 17, the modern day Babylon also is presented being drunk with the blood of the saints. That's right. So it's a part. There is a parallel. Wow. Yeah, you, right. you 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 can't um, you can't miss it. Mm -hmm. You it's so clearly that even a child can understand it. Yeah. I understand. It. So in the six plagues again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the east is been drying up, you know, from mm -hmm. the river, and what we're seeing here is that it's preparing the way for the King of King coming also from the east, east. like you That's mentioned right. before. That's right. So I ask both of you, isn't this a beautiful? Is and all of you out there, isn't this a beautiful message? Yes. Isn't that a, a message of hope? What, what's frightening about it, though, the parallel of, of the river Euphrates being dried up yeah. was, the, was the fall of ancient Babylon. Mm. But the night that they fell was very important. Right. Let's, do you want to hold it right there? Yeah. Because I know we need to because expand. Because they, they were found weighing the balances and found mm. wanting. Wow. Right. I think we need to expand in that because what took place back then was only a symbol of what is going to take place right on, at the sixth place. On a larger and seats, worldwide scale. A lot worldwide. In the meantime, God bless you, my dear friends. We love you in the Lord, and we hope and pray that you are following us, not only through this TV program, but through the message that being presented. God bless you. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.